distances. I hope you guys stay connected. I'll give you guys info after the class on how uh, you can join like our alumni groups. You can keep messaging with other people that are trying to figure this stuff out. Um, but for the sake of, you know, uh, just the practical step, if you go to autisticpsychedelic.com, click join, and uh, then I'll be able to add you uh, to this like meeting if you want to follow along on transcripts. And you can also reread like the totality of the transcript if you want to go backwards in time. Uh, I'll send that out as well. Um, but with that said, um, I've never taught this class live under this time constraint, so there might be times, again, as I mentioned, we're going to be giving you guys the free online class that will be taught live dynamically every Saturday in August, the first four. Uh, again, email and in information will be forthcoming, um, but those will also be recorded, so don't feel pressured to attend that. Basically, and to borrow my, one of my hero's words, uh, Sasha Shogun, who synthesized MDMA quite a bit in the 70s and basically brought it back to life with his wife, Anne. Um, and his daughter is kind of carrying on the torch now. Uh, when he taught a class at UCSF that was called like The Nature of Drugs, which is also a wonderful book from Synergetic Press, it's all of his lectures condensed. He had this way where he would encourage his students, like upon first listen of every lecture, he'd just say, like, listen to the music of this thing. Like, don't get into like music theory, breakdown, anything like that. Don't expect yourself to like emerge with like a mastery of any of this. But just like get into like the music of what we're kind of going through, you'll start to see some emergent themes. You'll have time to review it, and we'll also have time to come online. You'll join the other many, many hundreds of people who've already taken this course, and probably many more that will be there by August when we start. Um, so just to kind of take the pressure off you guys. Um, one other housekeeping note, unfortunately, but it's okay. Uh, the textbooks for this course, which I was going to provide to you guys, unfortunately didn't arrive in time today. If anyone is not going to the conference, uh, just locate me by the end of the night, let me know. Otherwise, anyone that will be at the conference will have them at the booth. Uh, and we have like a list of your guys' names, so stop through and pick those up uh, for that purpose. It was going to be cool to like have a little thing, but now we have like directed attention. And you have your Zoom screen if you want to like really get close to something. Uh, so that's the other like housekeeping bit. Um, <laughs> I keep being like, uh, any questions so far about anything at all? Wonderful. What's up? The booth number. The booth number. Good question. 338. You'll find us somewhere in there. You can also look it up by like name on the Sci Science app. Brian has joined us on the internet. Welcome, Brian. Oh, there you are as well. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the future. All right. Um, so with that, I'm going to get underway with this lecture. And again, um, we're about 15 minutes in. So again, I'm going to be kind of taking a headline level look at things. But... Uh, just a couple of ethical agreements as we move through. Well, firstly, you guys should probably see what I'm talking about. <coughs> Great. So, ethical agreements in the space. We like to deal with informed consent in psychedelic spaces and in life in general. And as far as agreements, please don't implicate yourself or anyone else in any illegal activity while you're here. It's common sense, but we have to say that psychedelic events often. Uh, similarly, do not source uh, nor provide people with medicines while you are here, please. Uh, this is also not any certification course. You will not emerge with any uh, governmental, state-level uh, right or capacity to practice in anything outside of community care and like taking your friends to parks and whatever risk tolerance you might have. Uh, but even in that case, we still encourage people to seek the support of professionals in whatever capacity. Again, we're not trying to be discriminatory, whether that is an indigenous practitioner, a therapist, uh, anything in between, uh, we want to encourage you to always seek out wisdom and guidance from those who have gone through these experiences. Um, and if anyone is having a particular difficulty with hearing, we can probably make some space for you up front as well. Uh, just let me know if my volume needs to go up. Feel free to just, like, raise a hand and I will be happy to shout louder. Okay, shouting begins now. Alright, uh, also just assume that um, this is not being recorded, this is from the previous class online, but basically just assume someone here is from the CIA, don't do anything you wouldn't do anywhere else. Um, also, please don't be violent towards each other, no, I, everyone's fine, alright? Um, disregard, What's the thing? question. On the ones that you're talking to, could you just go like two seconds slower for those of us who like to read? Oh, of course, oh, of course. Thank you. So, uh, this is relevant for the online course, so I will skip. And serious agreements aside, suggested that we enjoy learning and growing together, everybody. So let's have fun this evening. And 
one other thing to point out is that we do also have an online like networking meeting, kind of like we did today. We do like quick intros, just breakout groups, way to kind of like stir everyone up. There's so many people from different sections of this thing that we want to continue to connect to people. So if you go to autisticpsychedelic.com slash pro, that's where you can RSVP for that. So even though you guys are technically, well, after tonight you will be alumni of this particular background training. And so you guys are welcome to join uh, the next uh, meeting that we have through uh, that uh, as well. And we already did intros. Um, but a bit about me, some of you guys may, may not know. Uh, I was diagnosed autistic at 23. I was also diagnosed ADHD at 12. Uh, my parents didn't want to put me on any medication. And to much to probably the not delight of most of my teachers and principals and all these people, um, but they allowed me to kind of work in the way that I worked, which was like allowing like the suspense of maybe getting things done five seconds before a deadline to fuel everything. And, uh, but I was like a straight A student, I managed to get by just fine. And so I didn't really encounter any challenges until I was in more of like the social navigation of adult life. Basically I got a managerial job and I didn't know how to manage people particularly well because I couldn't really interpret a lot of the things that were needed then. Um, but basically, since my first psychedelic experience, roughly almost 10 years ago now, I've been in self-study, kind of self-experimenting, and after publishing these books, I've now partnered with University College London, as well as University of Toronto. Um, we've done uh, one survey that's about to be published from University College London, and has our name, like the organization's name, on the paper as like a co-authorship which is amazing because that will finally bring the autism field into this thing because I don't think they barely have really taken cannabis in, into consideration for how many people we hear with success stories with cannabis for so many things. Uh, so hopefully this can kind of make this conversation more serious when we get that research out there. Um, also just found out last week that University of Toronto wants us to help recruit for a psilocybin for autistic adult study. Uh, that's going to be happening. We're recruiting for that like in no uh, November, December of this year. We'll start recruitment for it. Um, so, you know, and again, it's a blessing that they allowed me to be a part of this at all. I don't have any academic background in this. I'm just a lived experience educator. Um, but I'm learning a lot about how that world works, the limitations of it, and I am taking advantage of the fact that I don't have any credential to lose. And I tend to kind of dance in certain gray areas. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, yeah. I they're not here now. I wish they were, but my parents are probably the primary reason that any of this uh, could ever happen. I got their blessing to talk about this at all. Um, and yeah, they were cool with that because uh, they saw the they saw the change, and they were like, "We don't need like any more science, man. Like you're good." <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, we also publish books, they're here, they're at the booth, if you guys are at the conference, you can find us there. Um, and I also instruct for all my institute in Sound Mind and Oregon, and I also just got an opportunity to teach for Naropa for the Psychedelic Assistive Therapy Program here in Boulder, uh, nearby as well. Um, and I'm also working on, believe it or not, a drug abuse prevention class. Uh, that is funded by the Organization for Autism Research, which is pretty cool. We're like, we're, we're kind of taking the angle of like, instead of shaming and pushing like pure abstinence, we're kind of like, what, what, what a, about that compound you're addicted to? Like, what is it doing for you? Can we find a healthy replacement for that? And like less of the shame and more of like the rearrangement and like giving people healthy substitutes and putting them into community, which I think a lot of us who had voice, they've come to our group, come to realize, like, drugs on the door is the fancy thing, but then they're like, wait, like, I can be known by someone else, I can be myself with other people, like, that's just going to last a lot longer than any high you could have. Um, so that's my background, we already did intros, so let's take a second and take a pause from, like, listening to my voice, get yourself into a comfy position, and for a solid, like, 90 seconds, I'm not really going to guide it, just find your own breath. I want to just encourage you guys just to find just the breath moving through just the very na narrow, like, piece of skin between your nostrils. Just try to locate that and just breathe for a good 90 seconds. So it's kind of cool out here.
we'll slowly come back into awareness here. And we may also have, we might try to maybe squeeze another person up front somewhere here, I think. It might, hey James, it might make sense to bring him forward, yeah. I'll come. Great. Uh, silence is great. Oh, yeah. 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 Y